Hello fancy people of the internet. We are now going to go over the blue of Avison Restored with special guest Travis Wu. Hello Travis. What's up? What's good? I have not seen these cards and it's my understanding that you have seen most of them but not all necessarily and don't yes. really have a lot of experience with it but have at least played one draft so this should be interesting. Get our initial thoughts. Let's go to the set. First card, Alchemist Apprentice. Um, I actually like this a lot for limited. It's just like better Oculus, right? I mean, it's filler, but well, it's like it's oh, like actually, different it's Oculus. Al- right? Never mind, it's worse Oculus, huh? It, well, it's just different, right? Because you can like cycle it at any time, but you don't get to like try and like hold off a two a two yeah. one or whatever. So, I, like, with if damage stacked, it'd be a better Oculus, obviously. For sure. But I think there are a lot of X ones in the set, actually. So Oculus might have been very good. Yeah. And this card, I mean, it's filler, but it's it's fine. I would definitely play it. Yeah, I mean, I I am definitely a fan of playing like off color cyclers rather than like two twos for five, you know, as my filler. Really, you'd play this off color? No, no, no. no. I'm saying like in. In, um, what was the set with the, like, Time Spiral or whatever? Like, I'd rather have morphs and off-color cyclers than really, really bad cards, you know what I mean? And this is, like, way better than an off-color cycler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it seems like a pretty basic card. We can move on. I mean, nothing for Constructed, really. Yeah, unless some, like, weird application, uh, with getting a bunch of guys into the yard or something like that. But yeah, I don't but even really then, like, it. I think there are better ways to do that. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, amass the components. Um, I mean, it it seems good for a limited, but it, it really depends. Like, uh, oh, this might be constructed too. It's possible. Compulsive research has been an all star. The extra mana is a yeah. lot. Um, I definitely got Zendikar vibes from drafting it, so it, I think that that makes this card worse than limited. But that's just my initial impression. All right. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, Compulsive Research was one of the defining cards of its format, right? And yeah. Uh, and like, continued to see play well after uh, in like old extended. Um, but this card's more comparable to Sift, which didn't really see a lot of play. And the times that it, it really audio is already getting choppy. Fuck. It's not good. No, it's not. You want to give me a second? I'm going to change this setting and then okay. see if that helps. Also, one thing, I don't know if this is even worth talking about, if the audio is bad, but like, back when Sift was not seeing play, there were, weren't planes while all snow, and now that you can play like Garrick at 4 or Tamaya at 5, there's just better ways to get card advantage. Yeah, that's for so sure true. Your card draw is just worse now. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just gonna have to like rip my own video and then edit it from Twitch because XSplit doesn't want to do two things at once. Um, but yeah, like I was gonna say, Sift saw very little play, and the play that it did see was like Reanimator almost. You yeah, know? and this doesn't been a card. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's it's awesome for limited. Uh, I love these effects in limited, obviously, and. Like you said, I think that for this much mana, you're there's so many better things you could be doing. That, and uh, there's also the fact that, like in compulsive research's time, there were things like sets uh, to get to to get control decks to power up through bounce lands, which then helped your compulsive researches and gave you card advantage. Like yeah. the, it was so much more of. Uh, uh, a, a velocity format that's not the right word but um that i think that this format or most formats nowadays are more like super aggression versus like titan decks you know it's it's yeah, not like this is like in the awkward in between yeah, yeah yeah exactly there's not these weird mid-range decks and there's not these uh like tron decks or 
you know, tap out control decks uh, as much. I mean, like, the Sun Titan deck is the only thing that is really close to that, but it doesn't want a card like this, so... Yeah. yeah. I, I don't... want to play Fatal Zooting. Fatal Zooting is a sweet card. Yeah, that card's insane. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think this thing's gonna see any real play in Constructed, at least not until, like, a set rotates. Yeah, even in Block Construct, I think, like, you're getting attacked by Hellriders and Garricks and stuff. Yeah. Seems too slow. Yeah, which is a shame, but... Arcane Melee. Didn't sorcery spells cost too less to cast? Um, I mean, coming from me, you'd think that I would like this, but it just seems like trash to me, to be honest. It's it's like one of those cards that's uh, like completely based around what surrounds it. Like, if there happen to be exactly compulsive researches you know oh yeah, yeah then then like you could somehow put it into some like turbo deck like a uh like sapphire medallion style but then you're gonna have a deck that doesn't function without this and five mana enchantment yeah yeah it seems like a casual sort of combo card yeah i, I don't really see it doing a lot something to just make it rain on your friends at the kitchen table yeah exactly <laughs> yeah Captain of the Mists. Uh, um, weird Tapper. Seems kind of like nuts and limited. Yeah. Is it rare or uncommon? I can't tell. It's rare. It's rare? Yeah, it seems sweet. I mean, Tappers are always awesome. Two mana is kind of a lot, but like a 2-3 is an actual body. And and you can give it Vigilance, basically. So you can like Six hit them. And... But yeah, it's like... Feels kind of Waxman Baku worse, right? But Waxman Baku was like the best card in that format. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like um, what was the the, the four mana th tapper that like it could only tap, it had no mana cost, and whenever you played a white spell, you untap it. Oh, that belly knot cohort. Or yeah, something? yeah. Tapper. That card was insane. Yeah, it reminds me of that thing but yeah, like way more expensive yeah yeah it is especially when like the idea of the card is that you can use it multiple times but like if it costs two mana every time it's unlikely you're going to be able yeah, to are you spending four mana and playing a human it just yeah it's kind of realistic yeah it's just that like this one is super unique because a it untaps which i love tappers that untap just because it adds so much more of a dynamic uh to like the way the card plays like it just gives you more options you know, like the better player is going to find weirder lines that will be more profitable for them. Yeah. And the fact that it's permanent, not creature. So you yeah. can use this to like fix for a double red yeah, spell I would or first something. Yeah, this in limited. Can yeah, I say that? for sure. Or you can like landlock them if they only have one swamp or whatever. Yeah, it does so many things, actually. Yeah, yeah. Very versatile card. Yeah, I, it seems pretty good. I'm glad it's rare. If it is rare, I really can't tell. <laughs> but yeah. it, it seems like an annoying card to play against, but and a hard card to play with because it I'm has so many I'm definitely sold options. after you said a block. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 100 on board. Crippling <laughs> uh, Chill. Tap a creature, doesn't untap a card. That's a sweet combat trick for limited. Or uh, race changer, I guess. Tempo, yeah, it's it's, it's fine. It's, it's just like it's like a super cycler, right? Yeah, it seems it seems fine. Um, I guess it's like one of the cards that. Okay, so normally cards that have this type of effect are either dead or, uh, like game winning, right? They're e either you would. But it cycles, which is nice. Right, exactly. Normally these cards don't cycle. And so, you're, they're either, like, only a fog because you're behind, uh, slash dead because you have nothing, or you win the game instantly because they only have, like, one blocker that matters, or whatever. But the yeah, fact that this cycle... Is actually awesome. Yeah. I bet you most of these will see play. Right. And this is one of the reasons why I was saying, like, Zendikar vibes, because there's, like, all sorts of little hook masters like this guy. Right yeah. Around. Yeah. And I, I like that, because, like... uh. I think a lot of limited, and this is super biased, like, I th I feel like where I gain my most edge in limited is uh, in racing situations, just because generally people, like, don't know what tricks to play around and how to attack and block properly in weird situations, you know what I mean? Like, By the way, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. If, this card just punishes a mistake, and it's, like, kind of weird to play around, and 
having it, you're you're not giving up anything having it because even if it's dead, you just cycle it. I used to play that card in Rise, uh, three mana tap two target creatures. I don't know if you remember that card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is way better than that. <laughs> yeah, it is. Also, um, some people in the chat are pointing out all of these instant speed cyclers, like the Oculus and this Crippling Chill, all give you a redraw at uh, Miracles. Yeah. Which is definitely relevant. That's nice. Deadeye Navigator. Dragon. Um, it doesn't have flying. Kind of hard to evaluate this card. I don't like it because the protection costs mana, and that's like 8 mana when you play it. Oof. It's... Oh, it returns right away. Weird. I mean, it protects itself sometimes. Right, like, it protects itself sometimes, but also if, like, you get it to survive... For a turn, like, if you get to untap with it, then you can just blink out anything you want for four mana, right? Because you blink this out, and then when it comes back into play, you soul bond it with something else. Something that's being targeted down. Oh, wow. Yeah, if you have, and say, then uh, have that thing blinked out. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Yeah, yeah, Every, all comes into play abilities or leaves play abilities. Okay. Or you can, like, re-soul bond things. Like, if you have something in play that's soul bonded to some crappy guy that you can't get rid of, you can, like, soul bond this to that, blink out that thing, soul bond it with something else. Yeah, I actually, this card's really versatile. Um, it's not especially powerful, I think, but it, it'll it have its applications. Probably not in Constructed, but it's, it's actually possible. Yeah. Like, what if you put this with a, with a Geist Honored Monk? Yeah, the, there were a bunch of, um, oh yeah, 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 they're right, I, you can't re-soul bond. But yeah, the the applications, I think, like, I, I just don't think it's constructible, but in uh, Red, at least, there were a bunch of weird comes into play abilities that uh, would be sweet to rebuy. I also saw, like, in, I don't know if it's blue or white, but there's, like, a a momentary blink that just like insta blinks it yeah so like i feel like that there could be a sort of comes into play a deck that you draft these type of effects around yeah this is definitely gonna like do some bizarre things and limited yeah this card devastation tide oh this is the uh not upheaval upheaval yeah if it was an instant maybe i i like that it answers and treat the angels it's like really hard for me to see this I don't know what Entreat the Angels is. Oh, it's the two white X Miracle Make Angels. Have you seen that card? Nope. It's absolutely ludicrous. Do you want to hear about it? <laughs> All right, what is it? Two white, or uh, it's it's white white. It might be triple white, but it's like three and then X X to make angels. Okay. Sorcery, so five mana for one. So decree of justice. Two. Yeah, but it's Miracle is two. Uh, is white white X. So you can draw, if you draw when you have six mana, you just made four angels that turn. Jesus. So that card's going to be pretty defining, I think, for various formats. Yeah, that is pretty awesome. And this card answers that card at value, so. That it does. It, it's, it's, it's so hard to uh, gauge the power level of the miracles right now, not having played with them, um, because... They they impact building on such a deep level that I can't uh, like it doesn't fit my schema of like the way that magic games play out because yeah. things like think twice for double rebuys on the turn and ponder and then the like actual casting ability of it like just being able to cast it and the fact that uh, snapcaster can like rebuy it later like uh oh. It's so... And uh, Nosh Revival, you know, people are talking about just Nosh Revival to solely to rebuy Miracles. It's like, there there are so many things, there so many factors that go into, like, judging how good a Miracle is going to be that yeah. are so sort of unknown right now that, like, really have to be tried out unless... 
unless unless it's just me and I'm like an idiot and everyone else is, already knows. But like yeah. it, it seems like it's really hard to create uh, the proper context to where um, to where like a metagame starts building around how miracles work. Yeah, I think the only card that's like obvious is the angel card I just told you about, and then everything else is like a huge question mark. Yeah, exactly. Because like I've I've seen the time walk and I've seen the five damage for R. Yeah, and those are hard to evaluate. Yeah, exactly. Like they, on the face of them, they seem broken as shit, right? But Maybe. then like, They're, but then it's like these cards are reverse ley lines, right? Kind of. Sure. Like, in the way that you play them. Which sure. Is pretty bad to draw one in your opening hand. Yeah. Yeah, but but like my my big thing was with the time walk, um, like imagine uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Avenger of Zendikar, Turbo Land, yeah, with time warps. Like, if you could, it, it's something that plays as an explorer when you want an you know early, or and it still isn't dead late. Like an explorer is just a weird cantrip, whereas that sure. would ex like if a deck like that existed. I mean, that's just one of the few well, cards that... If a deck can... like that existed, then this card would be playable, if not good, right? But, I mean, I think, like, the Time Walk one is really, like, dependent on the things around it. I wouldn't say that it's actually, like, good by itself. Right. It's... it's Well, it's again, it's all about the contexts, right? And that's one of the few, like, historical contexts that I can think of to put a Miracle card in. Because the the Miracle cards have no precedent, right? Like, nothing like this has ever come out in Magic, which makes it so hard to evaluate. Yeah. They're um, so awkward, too, because, like, sometimes you just want it to cost four every time and not six and sometimes... Yeah, one, exactly. Like, ...is that to 3.5. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then there's, like, all these weird games with, like, uh, Surgical Extraction or... or uh, thought scour or whatever so that when they nauseous revival or whatever you get to shuffle their deck or like mill their thing away you know it's just like all these weird um potential f impacts that they can have on the metagame or that the fluctuations that the metagame could potentially take in response to miracles make it yeah. so weird and it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out i honestly have no idea yeah i have a hunch but we'll see yeah Dread Waters. Um, I'm all about milling and limited, but I I don't think this is a plan. This is just a sideboard card for matchups that are gonna go long. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's a sweet like, screw you in like against a really a, a deck that's way way better than yours, but really slow. Exactly. Yeah. So you can just you like just tag him for ten. You knock him for ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just go long somehow. Yeah. Like, uh, in order for mill cards to be playable and limited, they should usually be, like, engines that can win the game on their own, right? Like, first or, uh, oh, there's, yeah, there's a crazy mill card in here we're going to get to, actually. All right, sweet. We'll, we'll hold off talking about mill until then, then. Okay, yeah. Elgold Shieldmate. Both have hexproof. Goddamn hexproof. <laughs> I think this card is very good, actually. Yeah. But, uh, Everything two, three with is going to be a ever. key toughness and limited. Do tell. I've seen a lot of bears. Like, for example, there's a red common. You've seen this, right? Three mana, two, one, haste. Target creature can't block this Yeah, thing. yep, yep. Everyone's going to be jamming those, and this is great against that sort of a thing. Yeah, there, with Sam Black, he, we were pointing out how many, like, two ones and two twos there were. And, uh... They're hard to block, also, because, like, creatures are usually bigger on your turn or something. Like, yeah. the white bear you can give for a strike, you can't really block that very well. Right. Yeah, the three toughness is pretty huge. It's, what Sam was saying was, like, anything with three toughness or two power and first strike are, like, way better than you think they are. Yeah. And this seems to fit that camp where it's, like, a two, three, four is, like, kind of underwhelming, but then the fact that it can protect a guy or, and, you know, obviously protect itself... While holding down the four, game. Also. Yeah, exactly. So it's like the, this solid blocker that like is hard to deal with. Like they can't just um, you know two one can't block it, and then late game it's not just this two three. Like it actually does something like protect your evasion guy or whatever. It seems like yeah. a sweet card, but like not one that you want a bunch. Of. Yeah, yeah, just one or two probably. Yeah, favorable wins. I was wondering when they were going to print this card, although I assumed it was going to be white. Feels kind of blue to me. 
<laughs> but um, I don't know. The card seems fine. Like uh, I wouldn't imagine myself playing it, but I would maybe play it someday. This art is freaking me out. Is this like a Pegasus with a bird head and a tail? Uh, it appears to be that, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like a sort of seagull head, right? I'm not. I'm not going crazy. And then there's a horse body with wings. So when do you play this card, if ever? Um. Uh. Maybe. Maybe never. Yeah. I mean, if you're playing, uh, like the Esper Spirits deck, like. Uh, the update of Finkel's Pro Tour deck, the one with Delver Lingering Souls, like maybe it's better than Intangible Virtue, which was then the uh, evolution from Draw Skull Captain. Yeah. But is okay, that yeah. worth it? Because then, um, those decks were playing like Two Gather, Townsfolk, and like maybe Blade Splicer. Mm, so maybe not, but I'd say like keep it in mind. And, like, Vigilance is really important sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's a card that, like, could see play at some point, but I don't know Probably if... Never. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's... There are definitely enough things in Magic, you know? Like, Midnight Hunting, Lingering Souls, Spectral Procession, whatever, that, like, it could potentially be better than one of the other options at some point. But I don't know when that would be, if, if ever... Yeah, this next card is just insane, though. Fettergeist. Have you seen this? Nope. 3-4 flying okay. at the beginning. I of think this might be more unconstructed than limited, actually. Each other creature you control. Yeah. Wait, each other? So you don't even have to pay for itself? Yeah, yeah. Like, this guy is just huge, right? He bought... He would just... 3-mana three 3-4 three, flying is huge. This is like, uh... Serenavifrit. Yeah, I, th I think... It seems... Not as good in limited because you have a lot. You're probably gonna have a lot of creatures. Right. But if you build this in a constructed deck with it, few creatures. Yeah, where well, your other guys are like Snapcaster and Sun Titan or whatever. Where like you you don't actually, you know, you, the one mana for them isn't a big deal. Yeah, I mean, like I think it'll be a key. This card might be key player in block also. Yeah, I could definitely see that, uh, especially like the block decks that I've seen. A 3-4 is huge. Yeah, a 3-4 is huge. Yep, that card's awesome. Yeah, we'll see. Fleeting we'll see what people can do with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm super interested for the Pro Tour decks to come out. I mean, obviously, because I'm oh, going yeah. to the GP, but also I, because, like, this format is... Uh, from someone who hasn't played it and just looked at it from the outside, watching the ebb and flow of that metagame has been so fun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, like, with the bannings... And then this new set coming in and changing everything up. I, I, I'm actually looking forward to seeing like what Channel Fireball comes up with. Oh, absolutely. People don't really know what's going on. So, like, it's going to be... Yeah, people people are really f figuring it out right now. Yeah. And there's going to be random decks, the Pro Tour. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Fleeting Distraction. Is this a reprint? You have, like, a Minotaur on the front, right? Or something I don't like know. That. I've seen it. I actually like this card a lot because it's always going to cycle and sometimes it's going to get you a brutal two for one. Yeah, I, I like cards like this a lot. And once again, we have to mention cheap cantrips, cheap instant speed cantrips do let you draw a miracle. Um, but the like this thing is I again I haven't seen the whole set so I don't know. But in sets where all the creatures are the same or like comparable like uh if it's one threes versus three ones or two twos versus two twos like okay invasion right was like two twos versus two twos and two threes and then threes versus three threes and so yeah. aggressive urge was like unbeatable like the best yeah, two for like whatever this would be great yeah so like depending if all the creatures are like two ones and two threes then this card doesn't do anything but if it's all, you know, one ones and th two twos and three threes or whatever, like if the, mm -hmm. if the stats match up well, it's kind of like that card. 
that switches power and toughness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Where it's just like dependent on the the average the way that the average creature base matches up with the other color's average creature base. Yeah. So we'll see. Just a sweet trick. Galvanic Alchemist. Um Meh. A solid horn turtle. I kinda like horn turtle in this format, actually. I kinda like that a lot. Any particular reason? Is there like a lot of evasion or well, I mean, like, I used to first pick River Kaijin and <laughs> Back and Hatchling and all that, so it just looks like a first pick to me, actually. <laughs> well, it, it, it is, it does have, like, a relatively relevant ability for, for a Horned Turtle, because, I mean, as you said, you'd probably play this with no text. And, yeah, I um, might first pick it with no text. <laughs> I, that used to be my main strategy, so. And, and, and from looking at Red and talking about, like, what a Red deck could look like with Sand Black... It, it oh, seems yeah. like a one four is pretty awesome. Three ones in that deck and two ones in that deck. Yeah. Um. Even against like blue, there's the two one, like a Ophidi- double Ophidian guy. Like, I think just having a, a one four is awesome. Like the one draft I did, all draft I was just looking for awesome blockers and I like never found them. Yeah. So, like, we haven't seen anything that has four toughness. I mean, we saw Federalist, but at common, like, we haven't. We haven't seen a lot. I don't know. I guess we haven't been through many cards anyways, but yeah, yeah, I like the card. Alright, Geist Snatch. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, like, again, this is a card that's, like, solely dependent on what the creatures look like. Yeah. Um, like, if there's a lot of bomb guys, then obviously you want it. If there's a lot of, like, cheap bounce, then it's gonna be better than otherwise, but, like, just looking at it, I don't know, it's, like every other card that's like this, you know? Yeah, I, I liked Summoner's Bane a whole lot, and I'll, yeah. I think this is worse, but... Yeah, and, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'd rather have... I'd rather draw a card than have a 1-1 one, one flyer most of the time. Mm, dep- it depends, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. Ghost yeah. form. Up to two target creatures are unblockable this turn. People are definitely going to play this and just try to weasel people out of game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is like the um, Sohana Ledge Walker or the the Treetop Bracers or whatever of the format, where it's just like I don't want to have to play it. Yeah. Um, just try to screw you out of the game. Yeah. yeah. yeah what's what's the uh, four mana thing that's like the creature can't block and you deal one to all their white and blue guys? Whoa, is this in the set? No, no, no. From I don't know Zendikar maybe. I don't remember the card. Um, it's just, like, these type of, like, falter effects are historically the way that, uh, like, I say bad players, but that, like, maybe less experienced players, uh, sure, you sort know, of the lean on. The elementals of the world. Yeah, 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 They sort of just lean on this stuff, uh, and because it has a, like, high enough success rate, you know? Yeah. Um... But, I don't know, some, sometimes Falter effects are really good, and, um, yeah. it's... Well, I mean, if it's, like, Scoria Elementals, it's, like, different from Falter, you know? It's kind of a brutal card. Yeah. Um, it might be good in green, like, there's the, the 4 mana 4, 3, the boar. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, cards like this are definitely gonna be better with the the bigger your guys are, right? So, yeah. uh, like, if you're, if you're, like, mostly blue with all these, like, crappy small guys, like, uh... Horn turtles and flyers, then obviously it's not going to be good. But if you're like mostly green with like a card drawer, a bounce spell, and this thing, then like you know you can definitely build a tempo deck around it. And it's definitely like a, another one of those cards that you can board in against a deck that's better than yours. You know? Yeah. Ghostly flicker. Um, there's just like so many random tricks in blue. I don't know. I mean, you play a couple of these cards we've talked about, I guess. This just seems worse than like the cantrips we've seen. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting, right, that there's so many tricks all at three or less mana because it makes playing around them kind of hard. Yeah. Um, the fact that this it does it right away, so you can use this also to like fix your mana. And yeah, yeah, or go off with arcane melee, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's, quote, normal use is going to be 
just like untap your guys to block, right? Oh, that's actually not bad. Or protect your guys. It's just a versatile card. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those that has like a bunch of weird applications that uh, is gonna be annoying to play around and difficult to play with. And figure it out, and then once yeah. we figure it out, then it's gonna be easier to play around and. Um, like people will know the basic tricks that can be done with it, and the people that are still coming up with really creative uses for it, like weird uh, comes into play abilities, or like oh, yeah, yeah, refixing right. their soul bonds in the middle of combat, you okay. know? Well, I'm thinking I've seen so many of these that it makes me want to pick them up later in limited because I'm bound to just get a get a few blue tricks. You know? Yeah. Ghostly touch. I actually think this card looks awesome. So you make your guy a nibbleus whatever? Oh, yeah, it, put uh, it on your horn turtle. It untaps also. Just neat. I love untapping. Oh, yeah, you can give your guy vigilance. I, I actually think this is this card's good enough. Well, okay, okay so I'm going to do this again. The thing that I was talking to Slack about with these uh, auras is that um, I like the fact that they're putting these really powerful effects on auras but those effects are just really powerful, not game-winning from a design yeah. perspective. Because they uh, make the aura worthwhile, which 99% of the time auras are not worthwhile because the risk of 2 but for 1. But it's also not, you're just dead, my guy's plus 4, plus 4. Yeah, flying yeah exactly. It's not like Armadillo Cloak or whatever, yeah. you know. Uh, so like you actually get to continue to play a game if you can't 2 for 1 them, and you have an opportunity to 2 for 1 them. Like, I, I think from a design perspective, these, like, the, they're, in red at least, there was, like, a rare one, an uncommon one, and a common one, and the common one was, like, probably yeah. not playable, the uncommon one was really good, and the rare one was, like, a uh, stupid casual card, but, but I like the way that they're yeah. splitting that up. They've definitely gotten better at designing aura, and yeah. I mean, from this, it looks like they still are, yeah. because... You know, ours have not even seen play for years, mm -hmm. especially because of, like, equipment and kind of boxing them out. But I think they're trying to figure out how to, yeah. how to do that. equipment and plus one, plus one counters and stuff like that. Um, and just the guys being so good and the removal being so really that, like, the auras haven't had a real chance to find, except for, like, I don't know, what was the last, like, Griffin Guide, I guess? Yeah. Like it's it's been a while. But um yeah, I, I think I think these ones are really cool. Griff Vanguard. Yeah, actually, I mean, imagine putting this on a Geist of Saint Traft in certain matchups. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to say it again. Untap Special target permanent. Untap target permanent, you can get a uh, you know, boost your mana. It's it's all I ever want to do is untap my lands. Yeah. Griff Vanguard. First pick, limited. This card seems awesome. Yep. Can you imagine this in, like, Kamigawa? Um. I would just Glacial Ray it. <laughs> <laughs> you always have that Glacial Ray. Always. I don't, yeah, this thing's awesome. Oh, apparently these creatures are called Griffs. Because this is another one of these things, right? Yeah, what is a griff? I don't know. I don't know. It's made up, I assume. Yeah, human knight is a griff. <laughs> no, because the, the guy is the vanguard, right? The guy riding the griff. Oh, the griff is the the stork. Yeah, the, Pegasus, yes, right? yes. The guy that I was very confused by earlier. That's a griff. Now we know. Okay, okay. Yep, the guy but seems the awesome. The creature type is human knight, so not human knight stork. So <laughs> right. Know. Uh, Haven Ghoul Scab. Four five. All right, so this is a card that's like, uh, like very niche application, right? Like this is this is a guy that goes with your comes into play abilities. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could see just wanting a six mana four five in certain blue decks. Yeah. Like it's kind, it's kind of huge. Six mana, four five is for blue is pretty big. Yeah, that's true. I'll probably play it. Yeah, why not? But I mean, kind of weak, you know. This 
you don't have bombs and you need a six drop. Yeah, yeah, it's like when you need a win condition or if you have a weird interaction. Like, one thing that's interesting is the Griff Vanguard that we just talked about um, has a cool, comes in a play ability, so you can use your blink effects on it. Yeah. But you don't want to have to pay five mana and not be able to attack with your three two every turn just to draw a card. Yeah, yeah, that is not worth it. So it like the... right, but like your your other thing, like your soulbound guy, that can blink out. Like you can do cool stuff with that. But yeah, I don't know. Infinite reflection, uh, an expensive aura. This is bizarre. Oh, this is Alpha Strike Central, right? If you have one big guy, you just put it on it and swing. <laughs> ah, the blue overrun. <laughs> yeah, that seems, that seems awesome. I like how they specified non-token, so you can just like be a dick. Yeah, I was. Oh, I was gonna use my spirit. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was gonna like. Oh. Awakening oh, zone. Right. Awakening zone, and then you know, equip my whatever my. It's kind of lame. I wanted to do that. <laughs> That's what I was gonna do. Uh, yeah, I mean, this card's just, like, probably casual fodder that's gonna, like, have some, like, some pro is gonna play it at the Pro Tour and it's gonna be mind-blowing. Like, that Japanese dude that played, like, the Call of Kin and Sudden Disappearance and won a GP. I don't remember this. Is this constructed? No, limited. Yeah. GP Kobe, he, like, you know, Sudden Disappearance, the six-mana sorcery, is, like, basically a falter with some weird applications, and then call to the call of the kin or whatever call yeah. of the kind that's just like completely unplayable but he had like 11 humans and just jammed it and like beat yuya with it in the top eight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah sure it's gonna be like one of those situations where it's like not actually playable but somebody's gonna do something awesome with it i think it's play i think it's playable and limited I i'll play this meh like you need to have a big guy and a bunch of other guys and not be ahead already. Sure. Well, and it I mean, be big enough like, to matter. And it not getting removed, like getting two risky, for one. Yeah. Say there's board parity, and you spend your sixth turn putting this on your Griff Vanguard, right? Like, they kind of need to answer that, or you're probably going to win. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's got like potential it's applications. Awesome. I don't know. It's a weird card for sure. Yeah. The physics of the reflections in the shards are not accurate. Yeah. Don't make sense. No. Into okay. the void. This card is nuts. Look at this. I don't know. Holy awesome. crap. I love cards like this. Whiplash trap, right? Yep. <laughs> this card is nuts. Sorcery is kind of annoying, but... It is pretty huge tempo, right? Like Also... I think returning a creature is more than returning a creature in this set, because say they have four guys out and two of them are soul bo soul bound, you're mm. returning two guys and breaking two soul bounds also. Yeah, that is very true. And once again, you can bounce your own thing. Are there any like pacifisms or something that make these blink effect and bounce cards better? Um, I think there aren't. All right. There's a blue one that's pretty bad. There's like a, a nice cage basically. All right. Latch Seeker. Yeah, this is another Zendikar card, right? Yeah, this is a hundred percent Zendikar. I I do not like cards like this, but hopefully there's enough removal for X ones. It seems like there was a decent amount. Like it seems like there was very little removal, but like actual pure removal, but a decent amount that kills, like utility guys. Yeah. So uh, this guy is uncommon. That's worth noting. So you're not going to play against it too much. Yeah. Well, they said that about Invisible Stalker, and yet true. Yeah. It seems like my opponent has it every game. Yeah, they do. <laughs> just, just for you. Yeah. Well, these cards are both sweet. Not not really too much to say about them. Low um, revenue. This next card it seems awesome to me. Five mana, four four hex proof. Deals combat damage to a player. If you control no other creatures, you impulse. Yeah, that ability seems weird. Like five mana four four proof is actually pretty good. Yeah. I don't I don't know about constructed for this card. Um. Well, like, in a world without titans, right, this could be a real thing, like a Sphinx of Jor Isle type guy. Or yeah, like, yeah. Or Ural Miststalker or 
or Thrawn. Like that, there are there's room in competitive constructed magic for a card with these stats, right? Yeah, but, th- these cards are sometimes good enough. Right, but in a, in a world of like, Mana Leak Snapcaster plus Titans plus like super crazy aggressive flyers. It's that awkward in between. Yeah, I, d- I don't think that like it's it's possible in a metagame like this to work, but um, definitely awesome in limited because it's big and hexproof and happens to have this sweet ability that probably won't trigger in limited probably too often. Probably will never trigger. Yeah, but I don't know. You can you can set it up to somehow. This seems like a sound triplets to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean that in the worst kind of way. <laughs> No, nah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's. It, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point somebody constructed with this, but I don't think it's going to be viable for a while. At least until you know, some sets rotate. Whenever you cast an instant spell, you may pay one if you do draw a card. Okay, what do you think about this with all those cantrips we've been seeing? Awesome. Maybe? It's like it's like the blue mentor of the meek, but not really at all. Uh, yeah, it's, like, very slow, but, I mean, it seems like I would play it. Yeah. Well, like, how many instants do you really expect to have in limited, right? Like, probably... Uh, yeah, not that many. It's probably not very good. Probably only, like, 7 to 10, like, at the very most. Like, really forcing crazy, but... Yeah. So, I don't know, but, like, it's it's value, right? And it's... It's not... Um, like, it's a powerful enough effect. Like, if you draw one card off of this guy, then it's well worth it. You think so? Four mana, like, five mana, two, two, draw a card? Yeah. Cause you like, play that? Well, because you, you play it on four, right? And then you're, it's not like you, you're you turning your instant into draw a card. Your instant's still doing something, right? So if it's the, like, tap your one guy or whatever, then the fact that you are most likely, like, statistically slightly behind on board because guy is below the power low, power for um power toughness to cost ratio you yeah. make up for that by like fogging their guy so that even though you're like quote falling behind on board you're like buying time and drawing two like drawing an extra card for free sure i don't know it, it seems like you could easily manage it in like if you go like horn turtle into this guy into instant or like horn turtle into this guy into a flyer into an instant yeah it seems it seems super valuable. It's okay. It's it's no grip Vanguard, but it's I'd play it. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a card that's like I'm not gonna go crazy over it, and once I have it, I'm not gonna start like scrambling for instance. But like I probably would. <laughs> you like <laughs> panic. You're like I need to draw cards. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Yeah, but like if I have you know five to seven instants and I have this thing, it's I'm definitely not cutting it. You know. Yeah. Mass appeal. Draw a card for each human you control. Cards like this are annoying because they ne- make me need to go through every single card we've seen and check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a uh, third, uh, or when the was it, or when in the morning tide counted the other type, like the class instead of the creature type, and everyone had to go back to the first set and look at, at all the creatures again yeah, for yeah. for their it's class. Like it, yeah, it, it's. Uh, I also don't like cards like this because if you're ahead, then they're game-breaking, and if you're behind, they're dead. Maybe. Well, I mean, like, what if this is just a distant melody and we don't know it yet? I mean, distant was like that, wasn't it? Well, for me, it was insane. I don't know if I was doing it wrong, but, like, I actually drafted four distant melody every time. I just, like, kick game, <laughs> splash blue, elves, splash blue. Well, it's... It's definitely, like, there's less of a tension of tribes in this set, it seems. Like, it's more everyone has is all about humans, rather than other tribal sets we've seen have yeah. been, um, like, vampires versus werewolves versus, you know, or merfolk versus kithkin versus, whereas this is more like everyone wants and has humans. So the dynamic of, like, trying to put this into the context of a tribal set is a little awkward. Yeah, because this, this is the only incentive we've seen so far to be mono humans, right? Yeah, I mean, like, there's like small bonuses, but like, I'm saying this thing might be less of a distant melody and more of a like divination. Keep watch. 
even. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, we'll see. I think, uh, like, I don't like cards like this um, from a gameplay perspective, but, like, I think that they're cool from a design perspective. Like, they have a cool impact on the set. Sure. Yeah, I think it's bad. I agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, but I'll probably play it at some point. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure I'll play it, but it's like, I don't want to have to, just because I, sure. I know that my mass appeals are always going to be worse than my opponent's. It's just justice, right? Yeah. Yeah, mine's going to, like, cantrip on turn five, and his is going to, like, draw him three cards on turn three. Yeah. Okay, this next card, I've heard people say this is this is the top common pick in the set. Whoa. I would doubt that. Yeah, it's really good. It just seems insane. This is another card that I've been, like, waiting for them to print, right? Because, like, Mana War, yeah. Aether Adept, and then Rickling Cloud Skate, and... What's the other one? I don't know. But this... I, I think it's a little overhyped, but it's it's quite good. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about top common in the set, but it it's definitely, like, the best one I've seen so far out of red and blue. And Yeah, would draw me into blue, I'd first pick this. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's no Moldrift, but it's pretty awesome. Okay, next up we have Cheaty Face. What do you think about this? Oh, I've seen this card. This one is weird. What do you do with it? Not, I, I can't think of it yet. I just can't wait for somebody to, like, obliterate mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna make a moto photo. Yeah, I know it's gonna happen, too. Again? It's like, when that, like, unsummoning a quasi pride mage, or sorry, quasi ambusher. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, exactly. Saw that moto photo, it was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that... That's like, uh, you have you heard the um, Owen Turnwald Vendelin click story? No. All right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pull up my camera for this one. All right. So, Pro Tour Berlin, I think it is, or maybe a GP. Um, old extended damage still stacks. He's playing fairies. Uh, opponents playing zoo. Like, all right, attack you with, like, my Curd Ape, my Curd Ape and my Wild Nicotle. And he's like, mm -hmm. all right, Vendillion, click you. See that you have nothing, like, leave you with your hand, block, damage on, Riptide Lab. It's like, all right, she, like, bends her guy, and he's like, all right, you take four. All right, next turn, she draws. He's like, draw step, Vendillion, click you. You have nothing, keep it. And she's like, all right, goes another tank. It's like, all right, attack with two Curd Apes. He's like, all right. Block, damage on, bounce it. It's like, all right, take two. The next turn, she, like, draws. Backers, like, yeah. Back she, like, sends ape. one Kurt Ape. And he's like, all right, Ben, do you like you? And she reaches over for his graveyard. He's like, you have three of those? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, damage stacking. How I miss you. Yeah, I don't know if this has any sweet effects, but... It's like a sweet card. Like, it's cool that it exists. I just don't know what its applications are like. Oh no! Travis died! Travis died. Travis died. My story was too awesome. And by my story, I mean Owen's. Come on, Travis's computer. Ooh, that light is bright. Tilt that down a little. Oh no. Uh, all right, well, I guess I'll just keep going, because <laughs> I don't want to just sit here and wait for him.
As soon as he jumps back on, then he can jump back on. Uh, Nefelia Smuggler. Blink a guy. Whoa, wow. That's pretty sweet. Another thing that um, is good with the comes into play abilities. The onboard trick ma like masks your in-hand tricks really well. And... I don't know. It's a one-drop, which is cool. I'm getting like tired about talking about blink effects because they're so dependent on the other, on the things that you're blinking, and there've only been a couple comes into play abilities. So it seems like it's just there's not a lot of removal, but there's a lot of anti removal, which is like a weird place for a limited format to be. But I guess we'll see. Outwit, counter-target spell that targets a player. Yeah, I mean, it's a card that should probably exist. I'd rather have, like, Confound, but... Outwit is... It is what it is. Potential sideboard card, I guess. Peel... F Ooh, Peel from Reality. Now, there's a card I like. Although, I like damage stacking with it, but... It's still sweet, um, especially with that bounce, bounce bird. You're just like absolutely like tempo destroy them. Ooh, Travis Wu was online. Look at that. You died. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. My computer died. <laughs> it's okay. Very unprofessional. Um, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't happen happen again. It's okay. I just went on without you and did a couple cards. Okay, cool. Well, where are we now? Peel from reality, which is just awesome. Um. Yeah, it's really good with um with soulbound, especially. I feel. Yep. It's good with and against soulbound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. I was also mentioning. With, like, the Smuggler and Peel, there's so many, like, blink effects, so much anti-removal, and I haven't seen a lot of removal, and I've heard that there's not a lot of removal, which is, like, a weird place for a limited format to be, where, like, decks are better at protecting their guy that, guys than they are at killing other guys. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, and... Um, I guess this makes that sort of aura we saw earlier worse, maybe, if there's good bounce. Yeah. Ooh, somebody in the chat mentioned Snapcaster Peel from Reality. Oh, yeah, that's kind of nice. It's pretty, that's like, it's pretty cute. Oh, that's a little deranged, though. <laughs> uh, I mean, you just, like, jam it on turn two. You, like, Snapcaster your probe or whatever. And then, it's just such a little value. Then, like, like, peel it, get their guy. And then turn four, you, like, Snapcaster Peel, bounce Snapcaster again. You're just making such a tiny amount of value. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're just, like, treading water. <laughs> but you're making it, though. Yeah. If they have, like, a bird of paradise, then, like, you're just behind doing this, like, weird sequence. But you to... can bounce the bird, and you get mana advantage yeah. that way. They can't <laughs> yeah. Have it. You get mana parody that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rock Crown Ghoul. When it dies, you mill five. Lame. I like it, actually. I mean, its ability is lame. A 3-3 three, three for 5 is good. I like the ability. You would like the ability. Yeah. Why do you like That's the ability? Like, to put the pieces together, like, with the dread thing. <laughs> I, I just... I, I don't know. I mean, I can... More games come down to that than, you, than like, most people think if you play for it. Also, if you have, if you have like, three of these in your deck... Yeah, the, the second or third one could be a little scary to kill. Yeah, I don't know. It seems fine. I wish it would leave, was leaves play instead of dies, so you could just blink it and mill them out. Ooh, yeah, I would love that. <sighs> Too bad. Scrap skin. It, um, oh, here's another Zendikar card. Cloud elemental. Yeah, yeah, definitely a Zendikar card. Three butt in the air is like pretty awesome too right it's a lot yeah like especially if the four mana two two bounce is going to be format defining yeah if you're playing against that this card 
gets I'd say it gets value on that card. Yeah. Second guess. Counter target spell, that's the second spell cast this That's weird. Um, just probably just horrible, but like maybe in a counter control deck you might have one in your sideboard. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird card. Super flavorful though, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this is just showing how bad counter spells have become. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Just like, by the way, how horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Spectral Prison doesn't untap during Spectral's untap step. It's so bad. It target of a spell, sacrifice it. And it doesn't even, like, tap it the first just time. Just worse than Ice Cage in so many ways. Yeah, this is really bad. Although, what's the. Are there equipment in the set at common? I don't know. I don't think that I've seen very many, so like there might actually not be that many ways to like get out of it. So I mean, like I mean, it's, there's like all the weird cantrips, right, and like a million yeah, blink effects. Yeah, I mean, it's not good, but uh, I mean, it's mostly horrible. But it might not be incredibly horrible. <laughs> there might be <laughs> some reason to play it at some point. Yeah. Spirit away. This card is absolutely ludicrous. Jesus, look at this. You control it, and it becomes unbeatable. Yeah, this card seems so insane. Yeah, I'd say that's a bomb. And despite the couple Zendikar cards, 7 mana doesn't seem like that much in this format. You can play for it, yeah. Yeah, that card's pretty insane. I actually had it in my draft that I did, and splashed it. I think I played it once, but it just ended the game immediately. It seems pretty absurd. I wish that it was um, for you, 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 so that it was exactly mind control plus uh, spirit or spectral flight. Oh, okay. But I guess I guess that's fine. I wanted to give hexproof and lifelink. <laughs> 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 uh, Stern mentor. Okay, this is the mill card. I said that was insane. Whoa! Like. Like, what was the Marifolk for three, the three mana 1 3 that milled? Yeah, Drowner of Secrets. Yeah, this card seems absolutely insane. Like, I'd probably first pick this and just grief everyone. Yup. Oh it's, my god. It's like. It's like. Uh, cards like this make the mill deck, right? Like the Drowner yeah, or yeah. the. Like you said, the Curse, but especially like Vidalkin Entrancer. Like, that's the card, right? Like, that card was even though you like went for mill because of the like psychic drain or whatever oh my god like vidalkin and transfer was what made the deck work right because yes you, and this card river or like uh the horned turtle into this are you kidding me yeah yeah you then get to untap it for you know every you get to mill to the first turn for every turn after that plus you can mill two more for three mana yeah and it's just a great block uh, or i mean it plays well with great blockers, so I right. think this card is, like, really something to keep out on in Limited. This is, like, a Hadron Crab to me. Yeah. Yeah. I can... I definitely see that. This card is, like, uh... Like a one-card mill plan, almost. Can't wait to draft it. Cannot wait to draft it. It's, yeah, this seems like one of your, uh... Gonna be one of your namesake cards for the format. I hope so. Probably won't be able to get away from it. <laughs> Probably feel stigmatized by the end. Yeah. Stolen Goods. Target opponent exiles cards from the top of the library until she exiles a non-land card. Until end of turn, you can play it. That's weird. I saw someone get, like, a maybe a Tamiyo or something crazy off this, but... I mean, just bad, right? Yeah. I can't really see a situation where it's, like, super awesome. Or, like, what if your deck is horrible and they just have, like, progenitus in their deck? <laughs> trying to get there. Um, like, if it were an instant, you could do something where you, like, screw their miracle setup. But yeah. at sorcery, I don't know. And god damn it, another card that messes up Jehora. It's Jehora. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the Momer. I can play those formats just because these cards exist just because you get phaged out so yeah like, it's so dumb god damn it can they just like get rid of those cards and make the format better just like 
Ugh, this is the worst day of my life. Yeah. We're just going to ruin so many games of Jehora. Uh, Very relevant. Yeah. My go-to format. Yeah. My best format. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So this Planeswalker is one of the few cards that I have seen. And it's bonkers. Okay, what do you think about the minus two? It's pretty bad. But it's like... It's like you're going to use it to, like, draw three cards before wrathing the same turn, right? Like, yeah. You're, you're not going to... Or, like, a way like, dig oh, for oh. answers when the plus one... Like, to dig for a wrath when the plus one isn't enough. I'm going to lock someone with this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make, uh, an entire deck that just taps all their lands. Mono land destruction. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I mean it's it starts at a high loyalty. It immediately protects itself, and it's ultimate wins the game. I don't know. Oh, what do you actually? What do you think? Of the ultimate does it win the game? Yes. Like, all you need with it is a ponder, right? And you're probably going to win. And you win, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it seems, seems really good. It just seems insane. Probably play the card. Yeah, it, it, I definitely think it's going to be a uh, a real card in the format. Planeswalker, high loyalty, it protects itself. Yep. Insane ultimate. You yep. know, it's, a, it's really good. Yep, agreed. Tandem Lookout. I got absolutely abused by this card by Brian Wong. Um, he put he just played a bear and he then he played this and I didn't <laughs> have a blocker. Yet. And I'm just like, okay, I lose. And then like the next turn he gets to send both his guys into your one guy. You're like, all right, yeah, trade no, and just, like, draw another card. It was even worse. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, I was just, can I concede, please? Yeah, this card seems like it snowballs pretty quickly. Yeah, it's just, like, one of those cards that's bonkers when you're on the play and just, like, can steal games. Yeah, and, like, even after you trade with the first one, then, like, they play their their hill giant or whatever, and then repair. Like, they don't ever have to, like, trade away this guy. Yeah. I like his hat. It's kind of fresh. Yeah. Temporal Mastery. I mean, we've talked enough about Miracles... This seems like one of the ones that most people are excited about that I actually think is going to be, yeah, like not nearly as good as people think. Um, but like, I'm sure it'll have its applications at some point. Um, I think that people are trying to put it into like tempo decks when I think that they belong, it belongs in like removalist control deck. Yeah, 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 exactly. Play with Tamiyo. Exactly. Uh, oh yeah, to, is it was a win with Tamiyo, right? Tamiyo's ultimate. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think it goes in like Turbo Land decks and Planeswalker decks, like control yeah. controly uh, ramp style. It's not. I was gonna take not a lot of decks. turns with it and do absolutely nothing. <laughs> strong, strong. Yeah. You're just like, all right, make my ninth land drop. Take another turn. I'm gonna reclaim it. Go down another card. <laughs> uh, vanishment. Oh, Submerge. Yeah, it seems pretty sweet. Yep. I don't, um, know, I don't know what else to say about it. High pick and limited, I'd say. Yeah, it's a sweet tempo card. I definitely okay. like instant bounce, especially stuff like this, just as, like, the anti-trick. Um, I think the anti-trick has a lot more value than people realize. Uh, like... Um, the anti-trick. Like, when you can, uh, like, set up an aggressor block where um, you're, like, favored, and they can moan of heroism or whatever to, like, oh, yeah, blow yeah. you out. You know what else? Then you re-blow them out. If you have two of these, then you play stolen goods, I think. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not on permanent too, so. Yeah, you can tag their planeswalker, which is pretty huge. Put a spirit away and then cast it on their guy. <laughs> and um, 
And yeah, it's like also a card that uh, does stuff with things like the um, Thought Scour or so like the, the anti miracle cards also work with it. I guess. I don't know. It's it's almost assuredly like, gonna be a limited card, but there's a chance of it's in constructed play. Yeah, it's it's definitely possible. Like I think that this is a better is likely a better tempo card in a Delver style deck than Time Walk. Yeah, for sure. This is better than Tempo Mastery. Yeah. In in that style deck. In like It's also castable. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Wing okay. Crafter. A really high pick in Ormita. This card is insane. Yeah, that seems awesome. It's sort of like the the red equivalent to this is the um uh, fire breathing one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all those are insane. Yeah. Um you can put this with the green boar. Or Yeah, another card that's super awesome. It's it's super Zendikari. Yeah, just all your stuff has flying, no one can block anything. Yep. And it like deals two points on its own because it's a one drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think this card's really good. I'd I'd first pick it probably. Yeah. I might pick it over the Griff Vanguard actually. Maybe. I mean, it. I'd have to see like how grindy the format is versus how Zendikari it is. Yeah, we'll find out. Yep. But... And that concludes our blue spoiler. Yeah. Any any closing thoughts? Um, I just want to say thanks for having me. Awesome. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for yeah, coming I'd on. I'd love to come back and do this again. Yeah, it was fun. Even the computer exploded. Yeah, I think I need a new battery. <laughs> Dude, okay, so my, my laptop, like, my hard drive and everything is all fine, but, uh, like, my actual, uh, casing is all busted up because, like, I travel with my laptop and I don't take very good care of my things. So a fan broke, and it broke in a way that, like, with the heat sensor so now every time my computer goes to sleep it thinks that it's overheating and does like a thermal shutdown that's nice yeah so i have to like either shut down my computer or like keep it awake because as soon as it goes to sleep it's like we're overheating like the hard drive's gonna melt and it'll you know be room temperature or whatever it's like someone played spectral prison on it exactly exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that is one of those playable. <laughs> it is computer. Uh, and with that, I thank you, Travis, for coming on. Okay, yeah. Farewell, my friend. Yeah, uh, and let me know uh, when you're doing this again. I will, for if, sure. If you'd like to have me, yeah. We would love to have you. Okay, good to see you, AJ. <laughs> yep, see ya. All right, adios. Travis Wu. Not human.